Hey, welcome back. So this is take two. I don't know what happened. My camera decided to take a crap after I started my intro. But uh, welcome back. It's another piece of the puzzle for the IBM server uh, teardowns. This is the processor backplane. Uh, it's a big, big, huge, well, it's huge. It, I had a bow hunk it up onto the desk. It weighs 18 kilograms, 20 kilograms. Uh, 26 inches wide and uh, 21 inches long and in, uh, including these it's 27 so it's quite big but anyways this is the backplane for all of the processors that's on the server there's four slots on top and two of them were being populated two of them not populated they're blanked out and if I flip this over, there's four more uh, slots and those uh, same thing, two on the outside were used, two on the inside were not. So this has a capability of holding eight, eight processors, but in my application, in my server, it was only using the four. Now, uh, hanging off the end here, this is actually the back end, this is the front, because the processors slide in this way. Hanging off the back here, we have four modules, and these are the uh, flexible service processors. Two of them are totally encased. Two of them have connections to, well, you can't see. Let's try moving this a bit. Two of them are totally encased. Two of them have uh, connections to the outside world. Um, it's got four uh, connections, and, well, actually five, but. Uh, We'll look at these first, and then we'll look at the um, backplane itself. Um, so let's, and these are just, oh yeah, these are locked in. And that's the connections on this one. This one here, it's locked in as well. And this one has more substantial connection. So, Let's have a look at these two first, and then we'll um, tie into the backplane itself, and we'll open it up and have a look inside. So these modules, um, they had no other connections other than communication for data and control, um, and then this connects up with the backplane and the motherboard. But uh, these have no input for power. So they're scavenging power out of the processor and uh, out of the processors. Well, this one's difficult, why is it? It's even some of the, just hang on a sec, I'll get these lids off. Okay, like I was saying, there's no provisions for power on this, so it's, it's using parasitic power from the from the processors. Um, on the bottom side, it's cast, it's a cast plate, and I suspect it's aluminum. And it locks in with these locks, locks into the rack, and it's got uh, a crude, um, you know, raising of the uh, metal here for as a heat sinking. It's got full shielding around the, the connector and this is uh, flexible fingers that's uh, put on with an adhesive and that provides shielding around the uh, provides shielding around the uh, the opening of this connector there's provision for airflow and this is rubber gasket here so whatever connects up here I don't remember uh, provides airflow from here to here because that's where the only part there's uh, airflow, and then the heat sinking on the bottom. Let's take this off. Surprising, there's no shielding in this. Maybe this is a conductive plastic. Maybe that's what it is. Uh, inside, we see a uh, processor. This is the um, FSP. They call it flexible service processor. Let's pull 
place off. And again, we have to remove the heatsink to read the chip number. Let's put on with an adhesive. So this chip is a FSP1 3.0. Um, IBM chip. They roll their own here. And again, this is built in Canada. Let's pull this off. Now on the bottom of this, we have some conductive putty to provide heat sinking for this board. It provides heat transfer from the main chip and, and uh, where else? From the main chip to the base to dump some of that heat. And this is like a, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen these before, this has got a little bit of a gauze on it, a thin gauze, and then it's got like a heat conductive putty. It's quite soft and uh, oily. So that's how they draw heat out the bottom, and then they, uh, with airflow, they had a heat sink on top too for the processor. Um, quite a wide uh, connector for data and control. We've got, looks like four power supplies here. The four inductors, one, two, three, four. This one chip looks like it controls these two. This chip looks like it controls these two. So they're producing four different voltages for these processors. Interface. Um, not much else going on to it. This is monitoring, well this collects and monitors the uh, health data from the processors, how they're doing, temperature, uh, what their loads are, and it compiles it and sends it all back to the, the main host, the FSP host. All right, this one has the same layout pretty much. Probably has the same chip. Compare these two. And they are identical. Identical chips in both units. This one has a um, flash memory and it's got battery backup and it's got memory memory chip memory chip memory chip so I don't know what they're doing here this is uh, this one compiles probably from this one and sends it out through the data connections to the outside world it has the same four power supply in, uh, probably a buck converters here there's four of them um, like this is this is arranged like a little microprocessor. It's got uh, ROM, RAM, a couple little switches for configuring, and a backup battery. Three volt button cell. It's got a hidden connector here probably for maybe programming, debugging maybe. It's got one LED. So not too exciting. This is just, um, you know, this is the hardware that they need to uh, collect up all the processor, how, it, how it's running, um, how its health is, if there's any alarms, any errors, any shutdowns. And this uh, compiles it all and sends it back to the FSP host. 
Okay, let's have a look at the back plane. We got the four connectors on the back side for the FSP processors. And um, there's some hardware here for it to slide into and lock. Um, the rest of this, I don't know, there is no connectors on this outside of these four and these eight. So there's no input power coming to this. There's no data flowing in and out of this. The data flows in and out of the processors on each processor. They have uh, connections on the back. We'll get to the processors later. Um, I just want to show you some of this stuff. I don't expect to be much here because once I take these uh, covers off, there's it's uh, what it is it, it, to me. It, well, we'll get it. We'll get it apart and see. But what it looks like to me is it looks like a, just a giant printed circuit board with these eight connectors on it these four connectors and it's just sandwiched between these two massive aluminum plates that have been CNC'd out to uh, accept eight processors. So let me take some of this stuff apart and uh, we'll bring you back when I got a little bit more to look at. Alright so I was correcting my assumption take off this cover and there's another connector and that is for uh, adding processors, scalable. This is uh, it's fully gasketed RFI. This must be some kind of conductive plastic because uh, you know they're, they're counting on this RFI gasket here and it's got a plastic lid. So it must be provide insulation. But uh, yeah, so let's, uh, I'll get this thing apart. I have to flip it over and continue on the screws. Let's try flipping this over. This side we have a couple little PC boards here. Pull one of these out, you can see what it is. It's got two little chips on it. ATMLH834. I'm wondering if that is um, a serial, serial prom, serial EEPROM. Let's pull this one out. Ah, it's a little different. The epoxy encoded. This one has two chips that are bonded. It looks like they might be bonded to the board, cobs. A couple little um, crystal oscillators here, clocks. So something's going on with this. I don't know what that is all about. M6 bolts. Okay, this should be free. Let's see if we can lift it off. Uh, maybe not. Let me separate these. Yeah, we should be able to separate these. I think I might have fasteners from the other side. Hang on, I gotta flip this over. The pin is holding, I think. There we go. So, it's a pretty heavy plate, it's aluminum, and it's all been custom CNC'd. I wonder how long it takes for them to machine this part. 
this nice chunk of aluminum, that's good scrap value. Get this out of the way. Let's have a look at this insulating sheet. And pretty much as I expected, it's just a bare PCB board with uh, nothing on it. So let's get this out of the other, the bottom part of the shell and have a good look at it. Another insulating sheet. And let's have a good look at this. So like I said, there's not much to look at inside here. It's just pretty much all interconnections. And there's not even any power supply, power rails or anything to make things difficult. But I'm just measuring the thickness of this PCB board. It looks like it's about well, it's, it looked like it was six millimeters, but it's actually 5.37 millimeters thick. It's quite a thick board. If you look at it, it's got quite a bit of heft to it. I can imagine just how expensive it would be to produce this, this PCB board, the size of it and the thickness and the layers. Let's have a look here at it. Here it says core 16. Now, I don't know if they're talking about the number of layers within the board or what, but then there's some reference coordinates here, X and Y. These are probably in millimeters. I don't know what that's for. It's probably something to do with the manufacturing process. Uh, it's got a date here. It was built um, November 17th, 2008, and the time 1035 and even the mechanic or maybe the machine it's number H I'm not quite sure let's flip it over be the same on this side it says core is one so maybe this is the top side of the board uh, some XY coordinates again and the date Now you notice they have on one side of the board they have the processor connector here and then the other side of the board they have it here. They're offset from each other obviously and that way they can uh, get better uh, utilization of the real estate. They have the bolts for the connector from the back side and uh, these are I believe these are soldered in but we could take a look at that I could probably pull one out to see if it's soldered in or pressed in sometimes these connectors are pressed in they have a, um, a specific diameter hole and what they do is the machine presses the uh, connector into the holes and it makes electrical and, and mechanical connection um, these connectors are huge 14 pins wide and 120 pins long. What does that work out to? The calculator here. And we got 16 over 1600 pins on each connector for each processor. Four connectors here, the Molex connectors for the FSP, and then the two connectors for the um, the little dongle boards you can call them I guess I don't know but um, some test points here for power ground 12 BV 12 AV ground so they're testing the power supply it's probably power feeding through to these 
And that's it. There's not much else to talk about. Everything else is buried inside the board with the interconnections. Alright, thanks for watching.